Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. The last thing they saw was someone they trusted. You're tuned in to Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring retired FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. The culture of celebrity, what exactly does it mean? You think about it like, oh, extra perks. You go to the award show. You get to go get those notorious bags with all these goodies in that no one else gets and you get it for free. That's exciting. And then you go to the the show, you go to maybe an after party and then you go home and go to bed, right? Is that how it works? Uh, or is it something much, much darker? It probably depends who you talk to and who you are and, and what roads you choose to go down to once you've uh, reached that uh, place called uh, celebrity. Sean Puffy Combs seemed to be an individual that, uh, was there in the middle of it. He had his celebrity status, and he also kind of stood there figuratively with his staff and rod saying, come this way. We have party here. We have more things for you that only you can get as a celebrity. And some people fell for it. Some people went down that road, and they discovered there's some pretty dark shit down this road. Joining me to discuss, Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent, chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program. That's the thing with celebrity. I think once you kind of get into it enough and you start living this world, that's not like the rest of the world, you start to think that that's normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's the massive group think that keeps going. Tony, this is just keeps going down the same road. We see being paved from the get go on this one. You know, we said it's going to, the victims are going to get younger Uh, The charges are going to get more voluminous Mm -hmm. and yep, that's exactly what's happening. And are there going to be tag alongs that you're trying to filter out that are just people that are trying to ride the, Mm -hmm. ride the prosecution train that may not have been victims potentially. I mean, this is the most complicated wide spanning case I think I've ever heard of. What is, is shocking to me. And I probably shouldn't be like once you kind of analyze and go, Oh, okay. Um, but on the surface is this culture that seemed to exist at these ditty parties of dehumanizing, I guess, the sex workers or or whoever mm-hmm. they deemed to be less than um, that they could take advantage of. Some of these people weren't even sex workers. They were just, you know, they were models. They were people who were coming in thinking they were going to get a music deal. Um, not there for the sex or hired for it or trafficked for it. Um, they were just there. Some were the assistants uh, of others uh, as well. One of the uh, accusations that's come out this week from uh, Tony Busby and one of his clients, it's a uh, a Jane Doe accusation. Claimed she was 13 years old at the time. This was oh. in the year 2000 after the VMA Music Awards. The claim is that uh, she was at Diddy's place uh, for an after party. Diddy came into the room that she was in. Uh, and so did a male celebrity and a female celebrity. The accusation goes that she was sexually violated by both Diddy and the male celebrity while the female watched. Um, this is, I mean, th- that that speaks to a culture where, like, this is normal. Nobody's shocked by this. The, the woman didn't go like, well, my God, what are you doing? You know, or try to stop or run away. I mean, you could look at that and go, was that a culture of fear? She was fearful and didn't say anything that way? Or was it more so, she's used to this. She's used to seeing her significant other go and rape somebody in front of her and it's like part of the life it's so bizarre so remember you we've talked about this before and it's going to be the continued theme of everything he does and Mm -hmm. everyone around in a circle does he's all about power and control everything we see coming out is going to be an act (laughs) of power and control Mm -hmm. and literally so let's take that step back you know the life of a celebrity You know, and and these celebrity parties and what they're doing to other people. This is not about sex. It's not about anything except power and control. So when we look at many, not all, there's a few celebrities today. What are they trying to do? You know, these people, some of them have barely any education, any background in anything in life except what they do, their art and their craft. And yet they're trying to have power and control over what people say and vote on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Power and control. You know, this is. Again, it it's easy for people to get drunk 
on power. Yeah. Because what's going on in the brain is the dopamine is flowing, the oxytocin, endorphins, all the pleasure centers are firing in the brain for numerous things we do in life. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, chocolate, good, healthy relationships, and power and control. Yeah. It's, you know, it's because it allows in there. <laughs> yeah. See, I mean, yeah. so you can either go down the good road mm -hmm. of, of chocolate chip cookies mm -hmm. and having good, healthy friends and being of service to others, or you can have power control and manipulation of yeah. others. Um, it's all our brain chemistry is all doing the same thing. Yeah. Remember, we yeah. said that with Diddy. If he had just taken, like many others, taken his celebrity, taken his resources of wealth that he had and channeled that into full service of others. This wouldn't have been happening because he would have his brain would have been rewarding him in that same way, just like all these people. But it's that takes work. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes work to be of service to others. And it's a lot of times people don't have patience to put in work to be in service of others. It's a lot easier to go down the road of power and control because it's quick fix, quick fix, quick yeah. fix. And I think that's what it was. A quick fix. And also, if you're in service of simply yourself, you're getting all of the the glory. I mean. I mean, the, the, the quick things, you're not getting the long-term benefits of, of seeing someone else thrive and helping them along, but they don't even know that because they don't usually go down those roads. It's yeah. just me, 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 me. What can I get to, to fill that, uh, those endorphins at that moment in time? Um, there's another uh, piece of the case that uh, came out this last week, another one from uh, Tony Busby. This one is involving a, a business owner um, that uh, allegedly is someone who... Uh, helped a lot of celebrities uh, get jewelry and things of that nature for appearances and such. Uh, very prominent individual. The name is not listed here. Um, one could speculate. Uh, but this was at a Ciroc Vodka promotional party. Claims that Diddy took him to a room, exposed himself to him, thinking something was going to happen. And it took an A-list uh, sports star who allegedly came in, broke it up, and said, hey, you know, let's get out of here. This is not Okay. And, and and prevented an assault from taking place. Um, that's an interesting angle that we're, we're starting to see. I, I'm wondering um, how many other accounts like that we're going to see of, of other stars, celebrities, or whoever, people with power that were at these Diddy parties that maybe were surprised by some of the behavior that happened after a certain hour and were like, what the fuck? And, and did kind of do their thing of like stepping in but then getting the hell out of there. Because we have heard a lot of people who are like, yeah, uh, 10 o'clock or whatever, 12 o'clock, I'm out of the Diddy party. It's not for me. They just kind of start to see, okay, things are changing, time to go home. Maybe never truly getting a g big grasp of what uh, in totality actually goes down at those parties. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? The the star stepping in and, and stopping an assault uh, from the, the party thrower, Diddy, allegedly. Yeah, I think we're going to see that. I, I've, I've been in I'm friends with a few people that have, you know, that are in, in high level sports, professional sports and things like that. And they are those kinds of people that they're, there's a tight network, kind of like in, in any good, healthy group and organization, there are good people that are going to watch out for you that already have reps on things to avoid. I remember, believe it or not, when I was in New York, um, many, many years ago on my first tour in New York City, uh, we had a thing called the Goodwill Games, kind of like the uh, the Olympics, but kind of more domestic. And so we had the Goodwill Games. And I'm I'm doing helping out security at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in Manhattan. And this is where a lot of the athletes are staying. Um, CNN, Ted Turner was kind of organizing this thing. And I'm here walking in the lobby and in walks Shaq. Mm -hmm. And Shaq's got his entourage with him. And so all, and he actually called over me and a couple of the other FBI guys and a couple of NYPD guys and said, Hey, just me, you know, just to help, you know, be a buffer for me, if you would. And I was like, Yeah, sure. And I remember a few people walked up to him and um, females and wanted to take some pictures with him. And he goes, No, 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 no pictures, no pictures. And it's like, and I remember when they had walked away and buddy, extremely friendly, extremely gracious, a very nice guy to be around. And I said to him, I said, Hey, Shaq, I said, uh, why no pictures? He goes, Oh, that'll go sideways really quick. <laughs> people are going to use that against me and, you know, people can do nefarious things. And so I have a rule of, of my code of conduct. And mm -hmm. I've seen that with other people in, in those positions as well. They're, they're staying as good and healthy as they can. And then that what I saw him also doing was he had another celebrity with him. Um, 
big athlete and some and people wanted to take pictures with him and he was no 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 and he was the one pulling him out you know saving him from mm -hmm. those situations so you do have people like that are doing those things and so it's it's important for it, it's not important it, it's not hard to imagine that this would also happen at these parties because yeah. what was happening i think is you at, at a certain hour the filter would start happening mm -hmm. and here's and that's what I was writing while you're talking about this. It really struck me when we're forming cults, what a lot of times cults will do, they'll love bomb you to get you in Yeah, and they'll shower you with love. They'll shower you with affection as they're slowly grooming you into this uh, culture of extremely unhealthy behavior where there's someone at the top, generally in a cult, someone at the top, there's sexual things that are going on. They're for profit and there's people that are going to be victims. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so, there's another way that I was just thinking about this whole Diddy situation. Instead of necessary love bombing, he was celebrity bombing. Mm -hmm. He was offering someone and letting them feel the, the power of celebrity, mm -hmm. the influence of celebrity, being the celebrity club. So he's celebrity bombing you by surrounding you with all these cool people. And once you like get addicted to it and the dopamine's flowing – well, then we're going to escalate it, and that's where the filters happen. So the healthy ones are coming in saying, no, 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 I've been exposed to this before. I've seen this show, and I'm yeah. going to pull out of this because i got to go home. I'm going to have a normal life. Mm -hmm. And those that didn't, didn't have any reps yet, didn't have experience, and did not have a loving critic in their lives saying, hey, you need to get your ass out of there. Uh, they got sucked in by the celebrity bombing. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, yeah, I mean, and it, 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 it seems like it's kind of an all-around thing. I mean, uh, some of, of not only the people that would – go in and, and I guess take advantage of these people, take advantage of this culture of anything goes sex world. Um, he, he did the same thing with the victims themselves that, that came in and, and promised celebrity promised, you know, this is how it works. You know, if you want to get into this world, we've all done this. This is just what it is. And, and that's it's how they, they groom them to think, Oh, well it's the price of admission. Essentially. If I want all this fame and fortune over here, I guess I got to do this really uncomfortable or traumatic thing right now to get there. And, and I mean, and that's, I mean, it's the same, it's the same, it's a casting couch story, um, you know, just on a very glamorous level, I guess, if you're at Diddy's white party. You know, as, as, as the time of this recording, a couple of days ago, um, the singer Jelly Roll just came out. Yeah. And said something very similar to this. I was curious about what I wonder what prompted him to say th that he's been really seeing the dark, super dark side of the music industry. Oh, I and I think, and he said, and he's claimed he's going to uh, expose a lot of this because he's been seeing it. It's wrong. It's unhealthy. And uh, I'm just curious because there's a lot of dark things in a oh, lot of God. organizations. Um, and celebrity seems to be the... Uh, the, the path to unhealthiness. I'm, some I, I'm all about it being exposed. I'm all about people speaking up. One thing I would say to Jelly Roll about this is maybe don't uh, tease that you're going to be exposing people before you expose people because there's a lot of people who've teased that they were going to expose people and those people who are going to expose people are no longer people. <laughs> They're no longer yeah. here to do such things. So I love it. Great. Expose away if that's what you're going to do. But I guess surprise people with it. Don't tell everybody you're going to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's good advice on that one. Because <laughs> it hasn't worked out so well for others who've had that same mission when it's been found out. Yeah, no um, kidding. But yeah, I, I think we're going to find out a lot more uh, in the coming weeks of Diddy. It's, just, it's not going to end. It's just going. No, and it's not. Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. You're neck deep in a dark, twisted tale. And just as the tension peaks, bam, a commercial about some miracle diet pill breaks the spell. It's like finding a fly in your soup after the first bite. But here's the fix. True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. You get to enjoy your crime stories without the junk, add free episodes, extended interviews that go beyond the surface, and early access to all the gruesome details. It's like swapping out a can of cheap beer for a glass of fine whiskey. So search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and keep the darkness flowing uninterrupted.